I am shivering with hope. And I'm lifted to hear such deep voices for justice and peace and reconciliation. You know, this kind of spirituality is needed nowadays that transcends denominations. And when I hear you, I feel this kind of spirituality of resistance that is needed nowadays here. Spirituality of resistance and creativity. And since we talk about hope, I like the verses of the second Corinthians chapter four, verses eight to nine, which says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This kind of thing helps me to keep hope. This verse, this, this paragraph sustains my hope. And also my hope coming from the fact that we belong to the land, all of us. And as one of the leaders of the First Nation people, Sitting Bull says, man belongs to the earth. Earth does not belong to man. So all of us, regardless of our faith, regardless of our nations, color, gender, belong to the earth. The earth does not belong to us. It is a call of inclusivity. It is a call for respecting each other and also diversity in unity. I believe the voice I heard from you is a prophetic voice and the work you do is a prophetic action that all of us say occupation is evil and we need to end it and to let people coexist with mutual respect with inclusive call for justice. As you know, our kids, our youth suffered a lot. One third of the male population in Palestine have been in prison. One third has suffered from the prison. More than 20,000 women have been in prison since 1967. So a call to free us all, let my people free and this is very important message to see our cause internationalized because at this moment, it is very difficult to solve this kind of conflict to end the occupation by only dialogue or negotiation between Israel and Palestine. We need the international community to bear its responsibility to help end the occupation. When I see 52 members of the parliament in Canada sign a memorandum to end the annexation, to stop the annexation, to end the occupation, it is hope. It is really a call for hope. And as Palestinians, we always look to convert, to transform crises to opportunities. As a result of the threat of annexation, Palestinians more are more united. We work for diversity and unity. And we are making connections. And there are hope in reading the history. You know, we talk about the wall in Berlin. After 28 years, the wall is no longer there. We talk about the apartheid system in South Africa. After 42 years of systematic apartheid is no longer there. We talk about civil rights movement, despite there's some pockets of racism in the States, but Martin Luther King was able to transcend, to move, to transform. And in the Balkans, the conflict stopped. So this kind of hope, you know, we needed more and more to see end the occupation. And nowadays, if we make some mathematics that Israel is talking about in accessing almost area C, or it could be 60%. We don't want to lose our cause in percentage wise, 10%, 60%, 1%. But if we talk about area C, 60%, and if we make such equation, 
the West Bank is 22% of the historic land. Across 60%, almost equal 13%. This is where the black Africans in South Africa used to own before the change from apartheid to better situation. I think hope for us is a form of faith, a form of nonviolent struggle. With you, we are all able to move forward. And especially when we talk about women, you know, since the start of We Am in 1994, we impart on empowering women. And we created a lot of coalitions between men and women. And I think there will be no freedom if the women are not free. Especially our women does not compose only 50% of the population, but they raise the other 50. And with your voices, with your support, you are, you know, helping us more. You are empowering us to walk in this less traveled road, despite of divide, despite of the occupation, and despite on the personal issue, the separation between my wife and children in the States and in Bethlehem. This kind of uh, unholy trinity, if you'd like, on the personal level, we are able to overcome it. On the uh, national level, we are able to conquer it. And on the international level, justice will be the call and will be the march and will be the drums to uh, beat in order to free all the nations. And as the South African leader, Bishop Tutu says, and Mandela, of course, the uh, South Africa will not f be free until Palestine is free. Mm -hmm. And we need the freedom for Jews, Muslims, and Christians to live together in two-state solution or one state to guarantee that equality and inclusivity and reciprocity as the umbrella for any solution. Mm -hmm. We'd like to thank you all for your support, for your empowerment. And I tell you frankly, also, we shouldn't uh, not think of the peace camp in Israel, the Jewish peace of voice in the world. Despite they are getting smaller, but they are a voice and they are a ray of hope. It is also a part of renewable hope for us. Thank you all. And we would like to invite you again by saying there is more room in the end now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zugbi. Persistence is required. Our persistence, our action to bring forth a transformation and that, that justice uh, for all. Um, I, my last words are of gratitude um, to all of you who have been present and listening and uh, reflecting. Uh, for the gift of your attention and your solidarity in action. I want to thank our partners. <laughs> Zugbi and Tarek and Lucy very much for your clarity and for your generosity and for your hope. Uh, we want to strive to live up to the call that you are issuing to us in this context. I want to thank our delegates for their words and for their uh, speaking from their hearts of their own experience. Uh, they were church leaders, but ordinary people uh, who went and experienced and uh, we, we are committed to persisting in our advocacy. I want to thank our trusted advisor, uh, Wendy, and uh, Rachel also, who you now can see on the screen, who were resource people to our delegation, uh, that was so helpful to us. I want to thank uh, Kirsten, who has been working uh, to support this webinar and the work around uh, Palestinian advocacy, advocacy for just peace, uh, who you can see, Kirsten Van Houten, um, and helped us with the presentation today. And uh, we couldn't have done this without uh, the technical assistance of Gabriela Jimenez and Giselle Del Rosario, who um, helped to uplift us and facilitate us and make this all uh, possible. So I hope you can see their faces on the screen too to bring them from uh, behind the scenes to in front of the scenes as a critical part of this, uh, this process that we were in this morning. And uh, I just uh, close really with my uh, deepest hope for our collective action uh, as hope made real in this world. 
and thank you to all of you uh, for being present with us in this time.